So if you came of age in the 80s, like me, you might say that Prince's music was like the soundtrack to your life. But there's no one for whom that's more true than Maite Garcia, the belly dancer turned author who traveled the world by Prince's side for years. She was his wife, his muse, his best friend. And now she's drawing back the curtain on their private moments together. Here's ABC's Nick Watt. 1984, the year Prince smashed into our collective consciousness with the Purple Rain movie, album, that motorcycle, the heels, and an otherworldly aura. I don't know any other man that could wear eyeliner and wear heels and, and be a cool dude. It's just, it's not gonna happen again. Partners in life and music together, Maite Garcia and Prince made the video for the morning papers here in LA's Griffith Park. I'm honored to have known him and shared what we did together. Now, nearly a year after Prince died of an unintentional overdose, Maite reveals her side of their story in her new memoir, The Most Beautiful, My Life with Prince. Talk about him being not particularly lucid, perhaps an aspirin overdose. There were some signs there. There were signs. Once, she says, he was taken to the ER after what he convinced her was an aspirin overdose. You never saw him taking drugs? I never saw him taking drugs. I never saw him drunk. Marijuana, never. And the aspirin, I believed him. I felt bad for you during parts of this book. I know that people would probably be angry with him. I hope that I turned it around and made you appreciate and, and respect Prince. Prince is the kind of guy I just can't imagine having an everyday life. Tuesday morning breakfast, what's he like? His mornings were sometimes two, three in the afternoon. Disclaimer that right now, he's not your average, average guy. But he loved driving in the car. He loved Tostitos. Prince was intensely private and at that time a devout Seventh-day Adventist. Maite was pregnant, there was something wrong. She claims Prince declined medical intervention. The faith that he had just, it just made me believe that everything was going to be okay. It wasn't. Their baby Amir died of a rare genetic disorder, Pfeiffer syndrome, at just one week old. It's the worst thing that ever happened to, to me and to him, I think. A week later, they appeared on Oprah. Prince insisted. What is the status of your, your, your baby? Your... Well, our family exists. Mm -hmm. um, we're just beginning it. Amir is already dead. It's all good. Never mind what you hear. I knew we had an album to promote. And um, the faith that kept me going was that we were going to try again. Prince called the shots. He made the decision that neither of you would be there when Amir passed. I wouldn't have survived that. But you weren't given the choice. I know. I wasn't given the choice. And I was very, very resentful for many years. So the house that you shared... Yeah. I mean, he, he had that burnt down. Bulldozed down. That's the part of, of Prince that's very controlling. He doesn't look back. He just he moves forward. But soon, the loss overwhelmed her. I had a whole bunch of pills in the bathroom. I went into the bedroom because I figured if they were going to find me, at least find me laying down. I had a Yorkie. Her name was Mia. I had the pills in my hand and uh, she just came and just started scratching me. She just wouldn't stop scratching me. She saved me. She did become pregnant again, but suffered a miscarriage. I think that's what drove us apart. Three years later, Prince married Manuela Testolini. I think he thought because we lost our two children, two babies, that I wasn't the one. Prince and Maite drifted apart, hadn't spoken in years. In late 2015, she got a call. But he wasn't doing well. I felt the need to try to reach out. But once you're out of that circle, it's really hard to get back in the circle. Later, Maite got a text from his second wife, Manuela, that read simply, call me. She's the one that told me that he passed away. First thing I thought about was that he was alone. That was beyond heartbreaking to me. The genius who gave us five number one singles. The first in 84 when doves cry. This is what it sounds like when the doves cry. Cream. The last in 91. Cream. Died from an accidental fentanyl overdose.
Prince was a Gemini, and Geminis have two personalities and two different moods. Prince and Maite first met when she was a teenage belly dancer. I'm pretty confident that I, my, I had a past life where I was of that descent. She was an Air Force brat in Europe, and her parents dragged her to a Prince concert in Spain. They both. I remember through the loud music, you need to give him a tape of your belly dancing, you hear this? They got a tape of her dancing to Prince and actually met him later on the tour in Germany. When he got on stage, it was just, he owned it. I mean, it felt to me like he was performing for me, just for me. Maybe he was. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people there. <laughs> he would send me music. And then you met up occasionally? Yeah, I would, I would meet up occasionally. 16-year-old hot dancer, stage mum, slightly older rock star. It's like, hmm, he <laughs> sounds a bit dodgy. Maite, by the way, now has her own adopted daughter, six-year-old Gia. I probably would be a little hesitant for my daughter, but if I trusted her, then I would have to let her do what she wants to do. A year after Prince and Maite met, he released this. Are you the most beautiful girl in the world? <laughs> <laughs> When he wrote that song, he had all women in mind. Two years after they met in 92, Prince hired her to dance on the world tour promoting Diamonds and Pearls. Diamonds and Pearls. My intention was to be in a music video or to perform live. It had nothing to do with okay. intimacy. That, she says, came later. In 96, they married. She was 22, he was 37. And I remember being on stage during a sound check and I heard, mm, mm, mm. And I was like, uh, <laughs> I'm being checked out, okay. And he would just say, it's about that walk. About a week later, I heard a song. It was a jazzy song that he just, they were jamming, and it's about that walk came out. It's about that walk. Maite in this book gives us a glimpse of a man who rarely let us in. So what would he think of your book? I think he would have liked it. Why? Because it's coming from a loving place. I'm Nick Watt for Nightline in Los Angeles.